Hi guys, welcome to the channel, Steve the Transit Camper. Hope you're all well out there. I've decided that I'm gonna go off and do a solo stealth van camp tonight. It's gonna be an undisclosed location because it's a bit of a dodgy one. I don't wanna get into trouble. And I am thinking of doing a live stream later on tonight, so I don't wanna give the location away really. So tonight's ordeal will be camping overnight in the van. And I'm gonna tell you all about a serial killer that was in Shrewsbury in my lifetime, 1994. It's an interesting one, stick around. Owing to the success of my other two murder mysteries, <laughs> which weren't successful at all, I've decided to do another. I don't care, that's what you get with Steve the Transit Camper. So stick around for this one. Interesting story, I'll try and keep it short. I don't want to bore you with history done a couple of videos like this and I really enjoy doing them so that's why I'm doing them and the family liked them as well so this one is all about Shrewsbury serial killer it looks as though it's going to be a nice mild one tonight so it's not going to be too cold I haven't got cat the dog with me either it's definitely solo so we have arrived at the location uh, like I said, I'm not going to talk about the location really, it's just one of them. So uh, it's quite a busy car park, so we're going to get in the back now and settle down and we'll start the story. Show you a little bit of the area, but nothing too much. Let's get some cameras on. Got some lights on, gonna fire up the system. I'm just gonna keep my coat on for a bit because <clears throat> it's a bit chilly. I'll put the heating on, we'll get nice and warm. And then we'll think about cooking something up while I tell you all about the serial killer of Shrewsbury. It's an interesting story. So the cameras are on. And if anything interesting happens, They'll be saved and recorded on there for us to have a look at later. So cameras are on. Not too bad, nice and quiet. There's a few cars that will disappear there through the night, I would imagine. Turn the monitor off, to save a few batteries. And I took the time to set the time. So first job, cup of coffee. Let's get the kettle on. Always burns your hand, that one. Let's get the kettle on. So while we wait for the kettle to boil, we'll crack on. So in 1994, I was 23 and I was living in Monkmore with my wife and, or my ex-wife, and we had three kids and we had no idea that there was a serial killer in Shrewsbury at that time. But in 1994, four men were killed. Uh, first initially treated as accidents apart from one. But then later in 2007, there was a, a big inquiry into this case and they found out that up to four people, all four people had been murdered for money, uh, robbery and uh, one of them never quite proven in court, but uh, this serial killer was definitely responsible for three and he did admit to being responsible for the fourth, but because the evidence he was given didn't match anything and by this time he'd had a stroke and uh, they couldn't take him seriously or they couldn't understand what he was saying or be 100% sure that what he was saying was true because of the brain injury from a stroke. He never got charged or eventually uh, found guilty of the fourth person let me tell you who they are. So in November 1994, two men were found dead. There was Robert Young, who was found dead in his home on Monkmore Road, which was 
literally one and a half streets away from where I lived. Never heard anything about it. Didn't used to buy the papers then as a sort of 23 year old lad, to be honest. And then there was another chap and his name was Bernard Ceausescu. Think I'm saying that right, probably not. But he was found in the river and they couldn't prove whether he'd been murdered or uh, whether it was an accident really, or even a suicide. But as I said, this chap did confess to his murder and he said he stole money off him and then chucked him in the river and he drowned. So, uh, as I say, they couldn't really prove that. Earlier in that year, a chap called Brian Coles, he was found dead in his home in Melverley. He'd fallen down the stairs, so it was initially treated as an accident. Kettle's boiling, it's just on the turn. Looking forward to that coffee. And then before that, in April, I believe, yeah, in April, a chap called Trevor Bradley, who was a little bit of an antiques collector, a little bit of a Jack the Lad around town, one of 22 brothers and sisters, crazy. He was found definitely murdered in his car, uh, in, a, in a burnt out car in a field in Melverley. And we'll look a little bit into that and uh, I'll show you how it all linked together to this chap. Incidentally, the chap that was found guilty of the three murders, probably responsible for all four more murders, lived only five doors down from the other killer that I've done a uh, video on called uh, about Madeline Joan Lee. Only lived four or five doors away from him and that happened in 1967. If you want to know about that story, go and have a look at that video there. Madeline Joan Lee, the sad death of Madeline just walking back from the fair. Terrible. Anyway, back in 1994, or 95 I think is when it came out, there was a uh, programme in the UK called Crime Watch. Crime Watch UK, and they used to show different crimes and ask for the public's help. And this is a clip of when Trevor Bradley's murder was brought onto this programme, and they were asking for help. And this is just a little clip of it all about uh, Trevor Bradley. Trevor Bradley was described as a very ordinary bloke. No one can understand his death, except of course his killers, or perhaps there's something that you can add to make sense of the crime. I walked uh, up to just think it was joyriders and uh, so it was still a light, um, slightly, and still smouldering. Um, so I um, had a quick look and then uh, went back home to find the police. Ben Sims thought he saw a body in the back, and by late afternoon a large investigating team had assembled in the field. The registration plates were missing, but detectives soon identify the car as registered in Ludlow. The owner, Trevor Bradley, had gone missing. For someone to do that, they must have hated him. And Trevor's not the bloke to inspire hate from anybody. Trevor came from a remarkably large family. He had 21 brothers and sisters. He had problems with his legs and often limped. The charity Motability had given him a Vauxhall Nova. Two people who'd been at the bingo are the last known to have noticed Trevor as they left at 10 p.m. and drove down Broad Street. Wasn't that Trevor Bradley over there? I thought he might want to lift, that he might have broken down. So we slowed the car down and he waved to us in our did seen us. And we thought he was all right. What happened in the next 12 hours remains a mystery.
So that appeal you just saw there was in June, actually, in 1994 on Crime Watch UK. Oh, I've been looking forward to that. So let's just have a look what we've got to eat tonight. I've got some uh, pea shoots. I've got some chicken, which is chicken thigh, which I've got marinating in uh, natural yogurt and this chicken tikka uh, powder that I've got. It's a made up spice. Mayonnaise, butter. This is that chicken tikka. It's absolutely amazing. It's really strong, spicy. And I have been using the whole packet on it. It comes in about sort of 50 ml packets of dust. And I've been using the whole packet every time, but I don't think you need the whole packet, to be honest. But, uh, oh my God, it's the best. I've bought loads of that. That's from Morrison's here in the UK. And then I've got some rolls. I've got some hot cheese spread. And what's this? Just uh, baby leaf rocket salad. Not baby leaf. And that's it. So we're having... That kind of style roll tonight with chicken tikka. One of my favourite sandwich fillings that is. I'm going to start cooking that in a minute. Bit of movement on the car park. I assume that's somebody coming in. Having problems with this camera tonight. I don't know whether it's because that monitor is off for me to try and save some batteries or what's going on really, but it keeps on freezing, which is a bit of a pain. And the sound is delayed, but there we go. Superb, keep me eye on what's going on out there. So let's just show you on this map that I've just created about how close all these murders were to me. To where I live so this is the map and this just shows the vicinity around me where these murders were happening a serial killer in Shrewsbury and I knew nothing about it amazing shows what you're doing at 23 doesn't it the last thing on your mind is what's going on in the news so the man responsible for all these murders it was found out in the end was a chap called Robin Ligus and he was a heroin addict who lived in Monkmore, literally a street and a bit away from me. He lived in Monkmore, he was a painter and decorator, but he was also a heroin addict. And he used to attack people and rob people for their money, which eventually developed into attacking and killing them, so he couldn't be identified. He was in and out of prison, and I couldn't really find out what it was for, but it would have been for burglaries and things like that. And while he was in prison, he had his sentence extended for, for one crime he'd done. He had his, uh, his sentence extended because he slashed a fellow prisoner across the face for uh, a homosexual advance, is what he said. And then uh, he later changed that story and said it was because he grasped on him for something. But this guy was obviously not a pleasant chap. So in 1996, Robin Ligus was charged with the murder of Robert Young at his Monkmore home, where he was found beaten, in, beaten to death in his kitchen. Uh, he'd stole some money off him. Robert Young was quite an, a recluse, really. Um, Neighbours hardly knew him. Nobody hardly knew him. But he was known to frequent that house, probably borrowing money or threatening him. And eventually that turned into murder. So... He was obviously free at that time in 1994 when these three, four murders happened. And he was eventually charged and sent to prison for life in 1996. And it wasn't then until the other three people came to light and they reinvestigated the families pressing the police to reinvestigate the deaths of these other chaps that uh, he was eventually charged for those as well. So let's talk about the second one or his original murder was Trevor Bradley and that happened in Melverley. Uh, Trevor Bradley, as I said, one of 22 children, used to uh, frequent all the antique shops and things like that. And uh, he was a bit of a man around the town. 
uh, but kept himself reasonably quiet, but he was a bit of a chancer with the money. And he'd obviously met with Robin Ligas at some point. Uh, Robin Ligas had driven him in his own car to this field in Melverley, beaten him around the head with a bar that he used for killing people, stole all of his money. He had a large sum of money in his back pocket as he was that type of chap, antique dealer and everything, set the car on fire and fleed the scene. And he was spotted by a couple of builders who were doing work in the area. They saw smoke coming from a farmer's field, informed the farmer. He went to have a look and obviously they found the body of uh, Trevor Bradley in his car, burnt to a cinder and the police got involved there. So following on from that murder, in uh, October, Brian Coles was found at the bottom of his stairs. Uh, they assumed that he'd just fallen down the stairs. He was a recluse, he'd lost touch with all of his family and there's very little information about him on the net. But he was from Higher Heath in Whitchurch, which is not far from Shrewsbury. And as I say, he'd fallen down the steps or he'd been pushed down the stairs was the actual truth. Banged his head at the bottom of the stairs and he was found dead there by neighbors. So it wasn't until 2007 when they did the full formal inquiry that they realized that that was actually a murder. So all that leads on to November where Brian Young was uh, determined to have been murdered. His body was found on Monkmore Road, as I said. And that was when that they identified Robin Ligas as the murderer. He was convicted of that in 1996 and sent to prison. And then they re-evaluated him in a 2007 review of some of the deaths in Shrewsbury. They considered that they were all linked. And he uh, was found to be guilty of three of the four people. The last one was a, a bouncer in Shrewsbury. And his name was, let me just check. I want to get it right yeah bernard chichescu something like that and we know very little about him but as i said at the start he did confess to his murder but the police didn't believe him they said he was a serial confessor even though he only confessed to three other crimes than the one that he was convicted for but they didn't believe him which is not right for the family is it I think there was enough evidence to say that, yeah, he's confessed to another three or another two, which are definite. We can prove that. So he probably did the third. So which made him Shrewsbury serial killer. Unbelievable. Robin Ligas. So it's a teetotal night for me, as you know, as I've already said, I think. Who knows? Tea total night for me because I've got a. I'm going to get up here about six o'clock. I'm going to get out of this car park. I want to get home. I've got a lot of stuff to do. I've been doing a lot of DIY in the house lately. I'm getting all my stealth camping stuff together. I've built a bit of a cupboard in the front room in an alcove, turned it into a cupboard, and I'm loading all my stealth camping stuff in there because me and Mrs. Baby, as you know, go camping. We love it. But the more and more stuff we get, the more messy that front living room is becoming. It's not a living room that we use, to be honest. We're all based in the back of our house, but we've got this front living room, like the best room, but it's not. It's just an absolute tip. And uh, we just decided we're gonna sort it out this year. So that was my first job, mostly done. Uh, and I've got another cupboard to build. Right, let's start uh, tea. Tea, dinner, lunch, what do you wanna call it? I don't care. I'm gonna eat it either way. So the idea of this one is, it's gonna be a dry old do. It's gonna be a bit like the Indian style chicken tikka, you know, that you see. I've always done this in the air fryer. It's one of my favorite dishes. But I thought, hmm, I think it'd work in the van. Let's try it in a pan. So I'm gonna lay the chicken in as it is. And this, as I said, is in natural yogurt. I'm gonna make two of these rolls because I'm gonna keep one for work tomorrow night because they're so good. So I've not had these rolls before. Oh, they're, not, they're not what I thought they were. 
Never mind, what's it say? Four sliced focaccia, focaccia, I don't know. Ah, oh, you're supposed to open them up. Oh, maybe it could be quite good. Could work out well. Oh, they're already open. They are what I thought. <laughs> right, we're going to have a bit of butter on them. Dress them up ready. Can't have dry bread. Don't know what you guys are like, but dry bread, no way. keep my eye on that chicken because it'll soon get dry in that pan so you've got to keep it moving around got some of this hot cheese not had it before but I'm fed up with trying to melt cheese I put that on the wrong side but never mind there's one May as well do the other the same now. That will do for that. Then we've got some wild rocket. Lovely jubbly. And some pea shoots. Love pea shoots. Crisp it up a bit. Make it healthy. <laughs> That's them. Let's make it a bit neater. to hold that down, a bit of mayo. And they're ready for the chicken tikka. Let's get back to the cooking. Looking good. <coughs> oh, it's making me cough. See what I mean? It starts to go like, uh, like the tiki you get in a Chinese, but what I want it, want it to do is go really dry. It's so spicy, honestly, you can, you can taste it now. So after that 2007 inquiry into those deaths, which uh, involved a, another post-mortem on the chap that had already been buried so he was exhumed Trevor Bradley and they found injuries on his body that were conclusive with exactly what Robin Ligas had said that he'd been beaten with an iron bar before he was set on fire uh, in his car at uh, Melville there uh, so yeah he was sentenced at that point to spend the rest of his time in prison he was already in prison because he'd been found guilty in 1996 and there he stayed in prison until his recent death. So in December 2022, Robin Ligus was found dead in prison in his wheelchair. And all they said on his post-mortem was he died of a medical event. So glad to see the back of him really. And he was in the right place away from me away from the public, in prison, where he belonged. Dreadful. And his poor old mum was interviewed and she was talking about how much he was a lovely little boy when he was younger 
and this is what happens drugs not good for you people stay away from them let's have a look at this chicken tikka not a lot going on in the old car park it does keep freezing it gets up my nerves you can hear a car go past and then nothing happens and all of a sudden it plays 20 seconds worth of film in about half a second so annoying so i am stealing ideas off other stealth campers such as squib wrapping them up in silver foil so we can warm everything through beautiful time is cracking on What's that say? Nine o'clock, I haven't got my glasses on, but I'm gonna switch that heating off because it's too hot in here. I might regret that in a minute. This isn't far off now. Oh, even when I talk up close to it, <coughs> I can feel it on the back of my throat. Look at that. Getting that brown tinge on it now, that burnt feel. Here's a little bit of what's going on with the power. So I've just switched off the Chinese heater and it was using 2.03 amps as it wound down. Uh, my voltage is at 12.46 and the energy I'm using is 23. So all looking good. So just the lights alone in here are using nearly two amps an hour, which is quite a lot really, isn't it? I haven't really thought about that to be honest, but we're all right. Everything's good and the voltage has been perfect since I changed those batteries. Love it. I was kind of expecting to see a bit of animal life or a fox or something come out from that woodland to the right of us, but nothing as yet. Oh, it's so teakery. Teakery, is that a word? It's so teakery and spicy in here, peppery. It's really on my throat, actually. I'm looking forward to eating. Oh, that's a bit of movement. Some lights have come on there. Somebody's on the move. I can hear a dog barking constantly. Along here, it's just some houses behind there. I think they've let their dog out. It's done nothing but bark for the last 20 minutes. Probably wants to go back in. So that is now exactly where I want it to be. This is what we want. I've even got a bit left over, look. I'll have that for tea tomorrow. Right, let's wrap these up. Then that's back in the pan to toast. One for tomorrow. I'll toast them both now and then they're done. So it's a bit of a guessing game now, really. But I'm going to give them two or three minutes on each side. I've just flipped that one over. So the first roll is done. That's on the side cooling. I've put the second one in now. I'm just gonna wait five minutes for that. Nothing going on on the car park. Occasional car, but not seen any wildlife yet. Disappointing. Can't believe where the time goes. 20 past nine already. Crazy. 
I must admit, I am missing Cat the dog, but I'll put a podcast on. I'll soon get off to sleep. Well, I couldn't wait any longer. Oh, it's hot. There we are, look. Looking good. Oh, it's red hot. It's like a panini, really, isn't it, I suppose? First taste. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that is delicious. Spicy already. You need to get that that uh, herb or whatever it is seasoning. Mmm. Wow. That is delicious. I'm going to eat this. I'll be back. This is so good, people. This is the best thing I've ever made in the van. Super spicy. Super spicy. Mmm. That cheese really works. Look at that. Wowzers. Well, we're settling in now. And I just noticed that the heating was still on. That's why I'm so hot. So when we had a look at the battery and what power we were using, that two amps was the uh, heater still running. So when it's ticking along on its lowest setting, it's running at two amps an hour. So <laughs> I've got 260 amp hours available to me. So you can work out how long that would last. I can't be bothered. Could have, couldn't be bothered. So, uh, Obviously, the lights wouldn't be using anything like two amps. That's ridiculous. So if you've already commented, I've already addressed it. So I'm one step ahead. As you can see, I am in bed. And I've watched a couple of videos outside a tank with his mates. That was superb. And uh, doing a bit of research again on Robin Ligus. And I think factually, I got most of it right. But there's bound to be errors, so... It gives you the idea anyway. There was a Shoesby serial killer and that's all that matters really. That's the message I was getting across. And if you're interested in history like that, you can always go and find out the facts for yourself. Don't put it in the comments I got stuff wrong. Because I'll just delete them. Anyway, let's have a look at the time. Not a lot going on on the car park. And I haven't got my glasses on again, which I should have. That to me says 22... 45 is it? 22.45. That's good. We're happy with that. I'm going to find a podcast now and try and settle down for the night. I'll leave the cameras running and if anything exciting happens, you will see it in the next clip or I'll use the time lapse, which is set up in the front of the van facing that way. So guys and girls, I will see you in the morning. Hopefully, I'll get a good night's sleep tonight. Got lots to do tomorrow. Good night, all. good night's sleep not really <laughs> uh, I didn't film but 
I was probably, there's cars coming onto the car park. I was probably up, I don't know, two or three times awake really. Just play on your phone, don't you? Text Mrs. Baby, she's awake as well. <laughs> so I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna have five minutes first and I'm gonna get up and then we're gonna hightail it out of here. Hope you find it interesting about uh, Robin Ligus and all of that. Just gives me something to do while I'm in the van, really, to be honest. I think it makes the stealth van camps a little bit more interesting. I won't do it all the time, but that was an interesting one that I wanted to get on record, really. Right, let's get up. Another car. Let's get up and make a cup of coffee. It's definitely cooler this morning, so I'm going to get the heating on. Let's get that revved up. Stay in bed till that's warm enough. Coming up on the show, I need to tell you as well, but I'm not going to give anything away. But me and Bird Jace have booked aeroplane tickets. <laughs> I can't tell you any more than that, but we are going away. He's going to have to look after me if we're stealth camping abroad. You have to watch that in the future month. We're warming up nicely. Time to get up. Kettle's on. This will be the heater ramping up. I'll show you quick because it'll make a noise. 5.3 amps. Car park has filled up a bit. You can't beat a hoodie in the morning, can you? Come on, kettle. Freezing. I've left it like a war zone. That's a bit better. Keep Mrs. Baby happy. Now, instead of taking the washing up home, I'm going to give everything a good wipe with these and then just swill them under the tap. Much easier. I'm going to call that boiling because there's a few people in this car park now and I don't want to give me myself away. Wonderful. That was so much harder to clean than it needed to be. Why didn't I do that last night? Never mind. That'll keep Mrs. Baby happy. Then we need to turn the gas off. Perfecto. We're all sorted. Just have me coffee and then I'm on my way. Isn't it funny? I don't ever seem to do anything because it's the right thing to do. I do everything because I'll get told off by Mrs. Baby if I don't. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> anyway, let's get this brew. And that's it guys, that's me out of here. See you next time. Thanks for watching Steve the Transit Camper. Take care.